कॉलेज के 125वें स्थापना वर्ष के अवसर पर माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति जी का स्वागत करता हूं सभागार में मौजूद सभी गणमान्य सदस्यों से अनुरोध है कि वे राष्ट्रगान के लिए खड़े हों माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति श्री जगदीप धनखड़ जी दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय के कुलपति प्रोफेसर योगेश सिंह जी हिंदू कॉलेज के प्रबंध समिति के अध्यक्ष टी सी अरंगाचार्य साहब और प्रिंसिपल अंजू श्रीवास्तव आप सभी से अनुरोध है कि दीप जलाकर आज के कार्यक्रम का शुभारंभ करें धन्यवाद अलंकार अब मैं कॉलेज की प्रिंसिपल प्रोफेसर अंजू श्रीवास्तव से अनुरोध करता हूं कि वे माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति जी को स्मृति चिन्ह देकर उनका स्वागत करें
मैं प्रिंसिपल अंजू श्रीवास्तव को उपराष्ट्रपति जी के स्वागत वक्तव्य के लिए आमंत्रित करता हूं ऑनरेबल वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड चांसलर ऑफ दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी श्री जगदीप धनकर सर रिस्पेक्टेड वाइस चांसलर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली प्रोफेसर योगेश सिंह सर चेयरमैन गवर्निंग बॉडी हिंदू कॉलेज श्री टी सी रंगाचार्य जी मेंबर्स ऑफ द गवर्निंग बॉडी एंड हिंदू एजुकेशन ट्रस्ट डिस्टिंग्विश गेस्ट एलिम नाय माई एस्टीम्ड कॉलीग्स एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स a very very warm welcome to you all to this joyous occasion of the 125th founders day of hindu college <laughs> our chief guest honorable shri jagdeep dhankar ji has been the vice president of india since 2022 He previously served as the governor of West Bengal from 2019 to 2022, and was Union Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs from 1990 to 91. A lawyer by training, he has been practicing primarily in the field of constitutional law as a senior advocate in the Supreme Court of India. Honorable Vice President Sir, I welcome you to this momentous occasion of Hindu College. Hindu College founded in 1899 by Shri Krishan Das Ji Gurwale is a beacon of higher education in India it is a space where the nation's best minds have been nurtured ranging from scientists and academicians to politicians and bureaucrats legal luminaries media persons artists and sports persons Last year in its 124th Founders Day Hindu College marked the commencement of its year long post bicentennial celebrations wherein we announced the college's 125th year goals today we will release three promised publications Virasat the coffee table book Dharohar a collection from Indraprasth the college magazine and sansmarano me hindu a compilation of our beloved alumni memoirs some other highlights will uh, in, during this year have been a unique commemorative postal stamp released on december 5 2023 in the presence of minister of state for communications shri devusan chauhan in this period we also hosted the minister of housing and urban affairs shri hardeep singh puri ji minister of external affairs dr s j shankar ji and finance minister shrimati nirmala sitaraman ji as also lok sabha speaker shri om birla ji among others for interactive sessions with students <clears throat> Over the years Hindu College has made tremendous strides in academics. We are proud to have received an A++ grade in the NAC second cycle <laughs> and are ranked second in the NIRF rankings all India level 2023. as also in the famous india today magazine ranking we are first in arts and science stream and second in commerce in the past decade the college focused on a large scale expansion of infrastructure to provide the best learning experience for students the college has added several new facilities sir for students and faculty the girls hostel the completely renovated auditorium sanganeri auditorium where we all are sitting today the new academic and science blocks an elegant amphitheater a dedicated research center for uh, with over 20 labs a multimedia studio and another auditorium and a guest house a new faculty block is coming up very fast and a massive library expansion is nearing completion 
Today, we witnessed the foundation laying, stone, uh, laying, uh, foundation stone laying ceremony of a prestigious project for the Boys Hostel, which will be housing 500 plus boys at an estimated cost of over 65 crores. The construction work will start very soon, and we envision its opening for the session of 2026. All this would not be possible without the generosity of our benevolent donors, prominent amongst them being Sri San Sanganeriya Ji, Sri Ramesh Dua Ji, Sri Mehra Ji, Sri Ajay Gupta Ji, Dr. Lalit Bhaseen Sir, to name a few. Let's hear it for them. On the academic front, the college has instituted a unique merit-based scholarship, the Raj Bhargav Scholarship, funded by a grand sum of rupees three crores, donated by our dear and generous alumnus, Sri Raj Bhargav, sir, and two new research fellowships, the BM Bhatia and Thadani Fellowships, named after illustrious former principals whose family has contributed for the same. In keeping with our tradition of paying tribute to our benefactors, today we shall honor Sri Raj Bhargav and Sri Krishan Mehraji by conferring upon them the Sarthak Samman later in this program. As always, our faculty has uh, been participating very keenly in national and international conferences and seminars with about 150 publications in national and international journals, 11 books and 40 book chapters as also two patents in this year. We have also, with the help of our very dear Vice Chancellor Sir, very graciously he has been you know, uh, doing all the pending jobs have been completed because of his support, and we have been able to recruit. <clears throat> so the highlight for the faculties has been that 65 permanent teaching appointments have been done in this college in the first round. And therefore, it fills that gap of long-drawn and long-awaited appointments, that gap has been filled thanks to our Vice Chancellor, sir. And you hear the claps more from the newly appointed ones. <laughs> Although Hindu College is primarily a teaching institution, we have also nurtured the desire to build a solid bedrock of research in the college. We have some global uh, collaborations with the uni uh, National University of Singapore, Singapore, King's College London, University of York, and some others. We also have rewarding collaborations with Reket Benkisar, Sri Ram Institute, Ultra International, to name a few. Additionally, the college has been sanctioned a skill development center from the University of Delhi. And again, we are thankful to the Vice Chancellor, sir, for this opportunity and for his, and for his guiding vision and support in all our endeavors. I am thankful to our chairman governing body, Sri TCA Rangachari, sir, who has given us constant uh, encouragement and support and has also sensitized us to enhance the dimension of accessibility and equality in all our endeavors. I would also like to put on record our deep appreciation for the invaluable contribution made by our member governing body and chairman Hindu Education Trust, Sri Ashwini Shankar Sir, Sri Sanjeev Gupta Sir, who's the honorable treasurer of the governing body, in having their belief and, and the constant encouragement that they give to us, this proves to be a big, big support. Dr. Ashok Mittal, sir, who is a member of the governing body, has also very fondly has been a former faculty member, has been instrumental in revitalizing the infrastructural development of the college, his tenacity and dynamism in supervising these new projects to contribute to the development of this great institution are truly admirable. Thank you, sir. 
I also express my gratitude to all members of the teaching community and to the non-teaching staff for their keen willingness to work in all projects, particularly in the year-long and the ongoing celebrations of 125 years of the college. It is their splendid teamwork that ensures success in all programs and in the smooth functioning of the college. Thank you very much, all of you. Before I conclude, I once again thank our chief guest, the Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Dhankarji. Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, and other dignitaries and guests, all the students and their parents for gracing this occasion. I extend my warm greetings to you all. Thank you. My college, K. Prabandha Samiti K. Adhyaksh, Shri TCA Rangachari Sahab ko amantrit karta hoon ki vay aayin. और सभा को संबोधित करें। Honourable Vice President of India and Chancellor of Delhi University, Sri Jagdeep Thankar Ji, Sir, on behalf of the future of India, which is here in this hall, I feel very proud to welcome you. This is the generation that is going to build Viksit Bharat. They will not only be the beneficiaries of that, they will also be the agents for bringing that about. अभी वृक्षारोपण के समय आपने कहा कि हिंदू कॉलेज की बात ही कुछ और है आपने सिर्फ हमारा दिल नहीं जीता है आपने हमारा मार्गदर्शन भी किया है एंड सर दो आर इंस्पायरिंग वर्ड्स विच आर गोइंग टू गाइड द स्टूडेंट्स एंड द फैकल्टी ऑफ दिस कॉलेज in the days to come. Thank you very much for that. So as the principal mentioned some time ago, the Honorable Finance Minister, Mrs. Nirmala Sitaraman was with us. She remind, reminded us how this college has instilled civilizational, cultural, and nationalist values among the students of this college not only to fight for independence when we were still a colony, but also subsequently for building this nation. Similarly, sir, when the Honorable Speaker of the Lok Sabha was here, he reminded us that the student parliament of this college is older than the Indian parliament. <coughs> सर भारत सरकार ने अभियान चलाया है बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ और आपकी इजाजत से मैं ये कहना चाहूंगा कि हम थोड़ा उससे आगे बढ़ गए हैं अब हम बेटी के जरिए बेटी पढ़ा रहे हैं द नंबर ऑफ गर्ल स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस कॉलेज इज अबाउट द सेम and the number of faculty, the female faculty, is higher than that of the male faculty. <laughs> Sir, as we look ahead, there is much to be done. And clearly, our goals are very clear, as has been set out by the leadership of this country. And what we are hoping for is that these students who come from different parts of the country will go to different parts of the country after they have finished their education and contribute to nation building. And there have also been some who have gone outside the country in service of the nation. 
I myself am an example, sir, of a person who comes from the deep south, state of Tamil Nadu, joined this college 62 years ago, and today you see me in the capacity in which I am. And that shows you that the vision that our founding fathers had of a pan-Indian institution, an institution that would accept every citizen of this country as a student and would train them and send them out as qualified citizens to work for the nation, that vision is very much alive. And even if that sounds a little immodest, may I say that we have largely attained that vision. And I assure you, sir, we will continue to work for that in the future also. In Chinese, there is a saying, Shunian Shumu, Pinean Shuran, that is to say it takes 10 years to groom a tree. It takes 100 years to groom a man. So we are now 125 years old. I hope that you will see the students of this college as having become competent, qualified, and productive citizens of this country. I, we have many tasks ahead of us. We are going ahead thanks to some very generous, munif generous donors to this college. This auditorium that we are sitting in, the new teaching block, there is a faculty block coming up, there is a research center that we have built which is unique in the university, and now, sir, we are embarked on building a boys' hostel which will have a capacity of 500, and I am grateful to the vice chancellor that he assured me when we were in the ceremony for the foundation stone laying that we can look forward to the support of the university in that endeavor. And sir, made in the presence of the chancellor of the university, I'm sure that would be honored. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. I want to thank the distinguished members of the governing body. I want to thank all those who have been generous in their munificence to this college. I invite them to continue to be our partners in developing this college and building it into a center of excellence. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us. I'm most grateful to you. Thank you. Dhaniwal, sir. Ab main apne Delhi Vishwavidyalay ke kulpati Professor Yogesh Singh ji se anurodh karta hu. कि वे अपना उद्बोधन सभा को दें। नमस्ते, गुड मॉर्निंग, गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू। ऑनरेबल वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड ऑनरेबल चांसलर ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली, श्री जगदीप धनकर सर। Shri T.C.A. Rangachari, Chairman, Governing Body, Hindu College. Professor Anju Srivastava, Principal, Hindu College. Very dynamic, energetic and uh, effective leader under the dynamic leadership of Shri T.C.A. Rangachari. Hindu College is doing very well. Honorable members of the Governing Body, Shri Sunil Gupta Ji, Secretary, Vice President Office, other respected officers from Rajya Sabha, galaxy of performers and achievers of Hindu College alumni, outstanding faculty members, invited distinguished guests, media friends, and my dear bright and gifted students of Hindu College. Good morning to all of you. Honorable Vice President has rightly said, Hindu College ki to baati kuch hor hai. Bilkul sahi kaha Hindu College ki baati kuch hor hai, dousra Hindu College nahi ban sakta. Dousra Hindu College nahi ban sakta and Delhi University is proud of Hindu College. And India is also proud of Hindu College. Bharat is proud of Hindu College. 
founded founded in 1899 23 years before university of delhi and you are doing extremely very well this is the journey of 125 years of academic excellence congratulations to all of you this is also the journey of achievements advancements accomplishments of academic milestones congratulations and your principal has uh, rightly said when we say the milestone nirf you are second in india nac a plus plus india today has ranked you number 1 it means whatever best is there it is here what is spectacular performance of 125 years <laughs> hindu college is shining star of university of delhi we are proud of you my dear students we are honored and overwhelmed to have our honorable chancellor university of delhi who is the honorable vice president of our great nation with us on this historic 125th founders day mananiya shri jagdeep dhankar ji ka main hindu college mein swagat karta hu aur abhinandan karta hu we are lucky to have we are lucky to have such an outstanding performer and doer as our chancellor and vice president of our country his presence is inspiring his presence is inspiring and is and is very assuring his actions are encouraging and motivating i would like to quote few lines of taruna mishra about sir kisi nigah ki jo bebasi samajhte hain kisi nigah ki jo bebasi samajhte hain wahi to log hain jo zindagi samajhte hain aise zindagi ko samajhne wale sir ka main pune abhinandan aur swagat karta hu Hindu college was established in 1899 colonial india was very different my dear students now in 2024 we cannot imagine those days those days were very challenging very different and every step in colonial india was a struggle i would like to thank founder lala shri krishna das ji for establishing hindu college why i am saying this was established in 1899 lord curzon was the viceroy of india british india in those days jamshed ji tata wanted to establish an institution he wanted to establish a university of science and technology in india he constituted a committee a proposal was prepared and submitted to the viceroy through the uh, the government procedures but then lord curzon rejected the proposal that indians do not have scientific rigor and temperament they do not understand science so if we establish an institution a university then students will not get any job there is no need of such institution and proposal were rejected by lord curzon tata died we all know in jamshed ji tata in 1904 then again the proposal was submitted when new viceroy joined india and institute could start in 1909 with the approval of lord minto second and that institution today is known as indian institute of science bangalore so those were very difficult very different very challenging days and in those days hindu college management could start a college hindu college it is a great achievement and we should pay respect to our founders and thanks to hindu college for nurturing best minds of bharat when when we saw the list of the alumn alumni of hindu college you have done very well extremely well and your journey was started from pandit madan mohan malviye who came in 1899 and now after 125th year honorable shri jagdeep dhankar ji is with us in 2024 this is a journey of 125 years from madan mohan malviye ji to dhankar ji freedom movement of two freedom movement to 75 years of our independence from britishers but what next your chairman rangchari ji has rightly said my dear students what next honorable pm has taken a sankalp of viksit bharat ye sankalp hai bharat ka bharat ki sarkar ka bharat ke logon ka par ye sankalp jo unhone sabne liya hai wo aapke bharose liya hai wo hamare bharose liya hai hum sabko us bharose par khara utarna hai ye sabse bada kaam hai 
और आप तो हिंदू कॉलेज के हैं आपको इसमें लीडरशिप भी लेनी है अपना रोल भी बनना है और लोगों के लिए रोल मॉडल बनना है ये वन के दिन फाउंडर्स डे के दिन हमको शपथ लेनी चाहिए इसकी क्योंकि आपकी वो पीढ़ी है जो भारत को विकसित होने में अपना योगदान करेगी हमारी पीढ़ी भी करेगी लेकिन उसको संभालने का काम फिर आपकी पीढ़ी का है आपका रोल हमसे बड़ा है ये आपको रियलाइज होना चाहिए इसलिए आई वॉन्ट ए प्रोमिस फ्रॉम यू कि हम अपनी जिंदगी में कोई ऐसा काम नहीं करेंगे जो अपने देश के खिलाफ हो जो जो लोग प्रॉमिस करना चाहते हैं हाथ खड़ा करें जरा हम अपनी जिंदगी में कोई ऐसा काम नहीं करेंगे जो देश के खिलाफ हो बहुत अच्छी बात है तो देश आपके सुरक्षित हाथों में है भारत बहुत अच्छा करेगा आप सबको ढेर सारी शुभकामनाएं और एक स्वर्णिम 25 साल जो आगे आने वाले हैं हमारे जब भारत विकसित होगा हिंदू कॉलेज का बहुत बड़ा योगदान होगा ऐसी शुभकामनाओं के साथ आप सबका बहुत बहुत आभार धन्यवाद कुलपति जी आप सभी को सूचित करते हुए मुझे हर्ष हो रहा है कि हिंदू कॉलेज के 125वें वर्ष में कॉलेज ने अपने इतिहास के तीन संस्करण प्रकाशित किए हैं विरासत जिसमें हिंदू कॉलेज का इतिहास तस्वीरों में बोल रहा है संस्मरणों में हिंदू जिसमें हिंदू कॉलेज से जुड़े लगभग 150 सदस्यों ने अपनी स्मृतियों को दर्ज किया है धरोहर जिसमें कॉलेज की वार्षिक पत्रिका इंद्रप्रस्थ के तिरानवे वर्षों की चुनी हुई रचनाएं तस्वीरें और गतिविधियां शामिल हैं तुम मुझे भुला न पाओगे कि भावना से हम हिंदू कॉलेज स्टाफ को कॉमोबरेटिव सिल्वर क्वाइन दे रहे हैं मैं माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति जी से अनुरोध करता हूं कि वे इन चारों बिंदुओं को लोकार्पित करें
धन्यवाद उपराष्ट्रपति जी हिंदू कॉलेज के शैक्षणिक और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चरल विकास के लिए जिन महानुभावों ने अपना योगदान दिया है उनके लिए हमारे यहाँ सार्थक सम्मान देने की परंपरा है इस वर्ष यह सार्थक सम्मान राजकुमार भार्गव और किशन मेहरा जी को दिया जा रहा है राजकुमार भार्गव 1955 बैच के हिंदू कॉलेज पार्लियामेंट के प्रधानमंत्री रहे उन्होंने भारत सरकार के गृह मंत्रालय में मुख्य सचिव के रूप में कार्य किया आपने हिंदू कॉलेज के शैक्षणिक विकास के लिए तीन करोड़ रुपए का अनुदान दिया जिसके द्वारा हर वर्ष प्रतिभाशाली छात्रों को राजकुमार भार्गव फाउंडेशन स्कॉलरशिप प्रदान की जाती है पुरस्कार ग्रहण करें किशन मेहरा जी यकुआर के सीईओ हैं आप हिंदू कॉलेज के पूर्व छात्र रहे हैं कॉलेज से भावनात्मक लगाव के कारण आठ करोड़ रुपए का अनुदान देकर आपने कॉलेज लाइब्रेरी के विस्तार का ऐतिहासिक और अविस्मरणीय कार्य किया है धन्यवाद सर हिंदू कॉलेज दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय में अपनी शानदार शैक्षणिक उपलब्धियों के लिए जाना जाता है इस वर्ष हमारे आठ विद्यार्थियों ने विश्वविद्यालय में सर्वोच्च स्थान प्राप्त किया है मैं माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति जी से अनुरोध करता हूं कि वे अपने कर कमलों से उन्हें स्वर्ण पदक से पुरस्कृत करें इस क्रम में पहला नाम है मोनिका एम एस सी फाइनल बॉटनी मोहम्मद अकीब खान एम एस सी फाइनल केमिस्ट्री मोहम्मद यकीब खान एम एस सी फाइनल केमिस्ट्री दीपक कुमार एम ए फाइनल हिंदी दीपक कुमार एम ए फाइनल हिंदी
Atlanta Chaudhary. Atlanta Chaudhary, MA Final History. Chandrashu Jain, MSc Stats. Atvika Chandan, B.S. Yonas Jiloji, third year. Bhavani Chauhan, B.S. Geology, third year. Garima Singh, Garima Singh, M.S.C. Final Geology. धन्यवाद। अब मैं माननीय उपराष्ट्रपति श्री जगदीप धनकर जी से सादर आग्रह करता हूं कि आज के विशिष्ट अवसर पर वे आप सभी हम सभी को संबोधित करें। श्री जगदीप धनकर समझ गए होंगे मैं मुश्किल में हूँ। All three very distinguished speakers आपके हाथों की इतनी एक्सरसाइज कर दी और हेल्थ के लिए अच्छा नहीं है। वाइस चांसलर डेल यूनिवर्सिटी योगेश सिंह जी। All accolades to him are well earned. Well deserved. Whenever I see him, I remember my days as governor of the state of West Bengal, where I was chancellor of three dozen universities. He is a perfect vice chancellor. <laughs> Genuinely respects his chancellor. Sri TCA Rangachari, Chairman Governing Body, Hindu College. In last one month, I have had brush with two chairmen from Indian Foreign Service. One, Rangachari ji, another Kamal Simbal ji at GNU. <laughs> they leave nothing for you to speak to the audience. They cover the entire space. But then, I have to do my job. Sir, congratulations. <laughs> Professor Anju Sirvastaji, I can tell you your principle is very difficult. A challenge to everyone. She took me around the gallery of Hinduites alumni. Could introduce Rangachari ji also as part of the institution in 1962. He joined it 
In 1962, I joined Sani School Chitorgar. That's the difference between us. But the power, the strength of Hindu college. She is the repository. She is an early manus of Hindu college. And rarely in life we get an opportunity of an assignment that is fulfillment of your aspirations. She is lucky to be principal here. We have in the audience very distinguished people. I'll be making a mistake, pardon me for that. Pankaj Singh Ji, he has two credentials, one. He is son of illustrious Prakash Singh Ji, a police officer whose name is known to everyone across the country and the globe. A worthy son of a worthy father, having held the same position, Director General of BSF, he was also there and his father was also there. I have had the good fortune to be blessed by one and to get the benefit of another. He is currently Deputy National Security Advisor, serving the nation. Sir Lalit Basin is another tough man. That is to indicate Pankaj is one. So let's not skip that over. I know Lalit Ji for a very, very long time. You can't provoke him. I have given up the fight. But in the field of law, he has been a trailblazer. Perhaps one of the first person to have law from there in the country. A man of simplicity, modesty, and disarming charm. <laughs> Gracious presence of Kavita Sharmaji has to be recognized. She has been principal of this college. Sri Aswani Shankarji, Chairman Education Trust. Sri Raj Bhargwaji. Well, anyone from IES has to be recognized, a retired one has to be more recognized. <laughs> Sri Sri Krishan Maharaji, Director Jaguar Hardware. As Governor of State of West Bengal, I talked to his brother. The journey I know has been tough, but full of success. How the idea occurred to him, and how the family was denied even an audience by those who were in authority in the trade at that point of time. I'm so glad he's an Ajumi. Boys and girls, when I was giving awards, the boys fought for a time. One, 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 and they collapsed. Girls overtook. But congratulations to all the awardees. I must make a particular difference to the presence of Sri Sunil Kumar Guptaji, an alumnus of IIT Kanpur, 1987 vice officer, president to the vice, secretary to vice president. His presence is with a reason. Boys and girls, Hindu college has many MOUs. The principal made reference to them. I, in my capacity as vice president of the country, had Indian Council of World Affairs. Sri Sunil Guptaji will catalyze an MOU between Indian Council of World Affairs and Hindu college in next one month. We have Secretary Rajya Sabha, Sri Rajit Punhami. He is, uh, whenever I indicate to his credentials and his love for black coffee, he is slightly embarrassed. I love to embarrass him. <laughs> he is a product of Dhoni School. 
and he can, I convey to your principal that we are in Hindu college, he is an alumnus of St. Stephen's. <laughs> and the reaction of the principal for the first time was mildly offensive. <laughs> she reflected, we want him to be here and see it. His presence is for the reason that he will catalyze visit of Hinduites to new building of parliament. I invite Hinduites in batches to visit new building of parliament. You would love to see it. Why I say so? This institution has been witness to freedom struggle and has contributed to it. This institution has witnessed securing of independence. This institution has played a role in nurturing independence by its alumni. But now is the time to blossom independence. You are there. Therefore, this institute is the right platform for me to be here and on this day. What an occasion for me, what an honor to me that I am here in absolute delight associated with 125th Founders Day of Hindu College. It has reached a vibrant legacy of serving the nation and blossoming nationalism. Boys and girls, looking at the vibrant discerning faces, I have seen you. All the time my focus was on you and you alone, unmindful of the destruction generated by the powerful address of the preceding speakers. They made huge contributions. It is because of you that I can assert today with pride on our historical path, past. Our civilization is those of more than 5,000 years old. I can reflect on that. With satisfaction, I can enjoy relish Amritka, our rise, incremental, phenomenal, unstoppable. But more significant, which is important to Bharat and the world, I have optimism, hope, and full confidence in future of Vixit Bharat because of you. You will contribute to the growth of Vixit Bharat. <laughs> Boys and girls, it is after a long gap, and a real long gap. Why I say so? I was elected to parliament for the first time in 1989 and had the occasion to be a minister also. After a long gap, what we have seen is we are in an era of hope and possibility. We have seen it both hope and possibility. You, the boys and girls, are the most significant stakeholders in governance. Hindu college throughout freedom movement stood as a steadfast bastion where echoes of nationalist order reverberated. Now, the tempo is different. We have echo of Vixit Bharat from here. Illustrious leaders, including Mahatma Gandhi ji, Sardar Vallabhai Patel ji, to name only just few, unreached its intellectual tapestry. We are all fortunate, all of us, across generations, are fortunate of India's Amrit Kaal. We are part of it. We have in recent years witnessed affirmative people-centric governance and phenomenal infrastructural growth. Never imagined. Never thought of it. Not in our dreams that we will be seeing such kind of development in Bharat as we see today. Dear young friends, there is now, and I'm referring to you in particular, there is now a wholesome ecosystem available for you, the youth of the country. You are now enabled to exploit your talent and potential to realize your dreams and aspirations. 
the system is helping you by affirmative policies and series of initiatives. Far too long, far too long for a nation with that civilizational depth. The system remained plagued with corruption and patronage. Corruption and patronage are the worst killers of young minds. Corruption and patronage are antithetical to merit and stability. Young people hate it because they feel cheated by corruption. They feel cheated by nepotism, favoritism. Now, boys and girls, is a big change, a sea change, a change for the better. There is now accountable and transparent governance in place. Let me focus on some of the game changer initiatives that you are witnessing. Equality before law is a constitutional ordinament that has eluded us for long. Some people thought we are about law. We are not accountable to law. We have immunity from rigors of law. The law cannot touch us. We have freedom to do what we like. We can trample on the rights of others. We can secure contracts. We can secure offices by that mechanism. Equality before law is the most inalienable, quintessential to democratic governance and values that eluded us. We are reconciled to it that we'll have to live with it even after independence. Thanks to visionary leadership, there's a big change now. No one is about the law these days, you know it more than I do. The long arm of law is reaching to everyone, particularly those who never thought they will be held accountable to law. And that's a soothing experience for you to take into consideration. Second, and I say it because I have belief in your discerning intellect. I have belief in you as future leaders of this country. It is prime obligation of all, all, particularly those in position of power and authority. They have to exemplify by conduct respect to law. So disturbing it is that you preach one thing and practice another. How can it be countenanced? Those in authority must learn the lesson. They cannot take to dilatory tactics or street demonstrations. I reassert, nothing can be more despicable in public life than to preach one way and act just another way. I call upon you. I beseech you. I urge you. Do all you can to rebuff such sinister tendencies. Respect for law is respect for nationalism. Respect for law is respect for democracy. Respect for law is respect for meritocracy. Respect for law is curbing corruption. Friends, I think now we have adjusted after a decade. Corruption is no longer rewarding. And those who got rewarded by corrupt means are being held accountable in exemplary manner in a situation they never imagined. The people also never imagined. That is a ground reality which is hope for you. Which would mean that people like you who want to rise on the premise of talent, merit and equality can be now full of hope that you are in a world where everything will be available on the plank of what you deserve and not otherwise. There was a time when power corridors in our country were infested with corrupt elements. There were people who leveraged decision making. I don't have to make reference what is in public domain by way of tapes or otherwise. This kind of sinister mechanism determined who will be a minister, who will be a bureaucrat, who will be holding what particular position. That was the level and depth of corruption. We had sunk to that level that the meritorious had lost hope. That situation has now changed. Power corridors have been sanitized, they have been neutralized of these elements. 
they have been neutralized of these elements to an extent that these elements are a matter of past. They can never revive themselves. That's second big change which matters to our youth. Our youth are run down by corruption. Our youth who perform excellently suddenly find because of corruption they have been left behind. You now have a good, healthy, wholesome ecosystem for you. Secondly, unprecedented, unimaginable economic rise. Just imagine how much we have traversed in just 10 years. A decade ago, our country was taken to be part of Fragile 5, a burden to the global economy. We traversed through a very difficult terrain, and now we are one of the big five global economies in the world. We are ahead of Canada, UK, and France. Boys and girls, in just two, three years, if not less, will be will be the third largest global economy in the world, ahead of Japan and Germany. Fourth, look at our national image now and global perspective. India's Prime Minister, his voice is heard. He speaks to the world that these are days not of war, but of dialogue and diplomacy. He says to the world, we cannot believe in expansionism. These are integral parts of our civilizational ethos. Rulers of this country over centuries, thousands of years, have never gone beyond our frontiers. Our voice is heard in global committee of nations, and we are championing the cause of those nations who never thought they will get justice at international platform. Let me make a reference to G20. African Union was made a permanent member of G20. European Union was already there. It is Bharat that took the lead. India has become the voice of Global South, a great accomplishment. I have hinted all these things for one reason. It is with this fervor and spirit that you have to work now. People of my generation and Yogesh generation, he put me in his generation, which is not correct. He is much younger. We faced many difficulties and had to achieve everything by most difficult caesarean mechanism. But I have indicated to you what you see at the moment. You can achieve anything which occurs in your mind. You only have to act for it. Therefore, it is with this fervor and spirit we must work as Bharat goes on to celebrate her centenary of independence. That is Bharat at 2047. Boys and girls, I take extreme pleasure, delight, satisfaction, and I am very hopeful what I am saying will be vindicated. Youth of today, youth of Amritkal, are marathon runners of Bharat at 2047. This march to Vixit Bharat must be your passion, mission, and goal. I have no doubt you will achieve it. The opportunities for you are enormous, and many vistas hitherto unknown to you are available. Our resilient financial ecosystem, bolstered by an inclusive digital payment system, is now a global model adopted by countries across the world. Just imagine what kind of a pride we have. Our mechanism, our product is being adopted by developed nations. UPI transactions, just to name one facet, alone accounted for more than, I'm not making a mistake of a figure, hear me carefully, 1.5 trillion US dollars annually. <laughs> constituting 50% of global digital transactions. Boys and girls, our per capita mobile data consumption surpassed the combined figures of China and the United States taken together. That is it.
and I will appeal to the boys to clap more. Good. The boys in the in this hall are intelligent. They could indicate. They could know. I would be making reference to Nari Shakti Vandan Adhinayam. A historic legislation, a constitutional reality signed by Srimati Draupadi Murmu, a tribal woman sitting in Rashtrapati. Imagine, just imagine, in Lok Sabha and state legislatures, there will be women participation to the extent of one-third and more. Just imagine. You have had already interaction with one of the finest brains in the economic field, our Honorable Finance Minister, Nirmala Sitarman. Many of you can look up in that area also. And I'm sure many of you will be there. Friends, when we look at what else we have done? Article 370 was a pain in our neck. The only article in the Constitution termed as a temporary article made us bleed and suffer for more than seven decades. It is not there. Article 370 is not there. People thought it is not achievable. Well, these are the times. These are really the times when we achieve what people think is not achievable. Groundbreaking achievements have taken place in space also. Chandrayaan 3, what a great success. India became the only country <laughs> to land its craft on the South Pole of Moon. No country has done it. And again, boys, Shiv Shakti Point and Tiranga Points are there on Moon, thanks to ISRO. All these steps cumulatively taken indicate our ceaseless progression towards Bharata 2047. I was happy to gather from a chairman that there is a research center. It has not come a day soon, too soon. You need to fully exploit it. We are living in times of disruptive technologies. These technologies have come in our houses, in our offices, in our society. We will have to see that we catalyze them in a reformed manner, regulated manner, to be useful to society and humanity. I would therefore urge the center to be more involved with it. We are at the cusp of technological revolution, a revolution which is being compared by some, and rightly so, to the original industrial revolution. And the speed of this revolution is very fast. We have advancements in artificial intelligence, quantum computing, 6G, Internet of Things, machine learning, and many more. But the best part is that our Bharat is amongst very few nations that have taken the lead in addressing, channelizing, and getting benefit of these disruptive technologies. These will define our industries, our security, and our way of life. Quantum computing, with its unprecedented processing power, holds promise of solving complex problems that were once thought insurmountable. A real, I wouldn't say geometric, it has to be much more than that. Geometric enhancement of capacity of computing, quantum computing. The national quantum competition, uh, quantum computing mission is already in place. Government of India has already allocated 6,000 crores. We are one of the seven countries that are engaged in this activity. USA, Canada, China, France, Austria, and Finland being the other one. So gone are the days when we will wait for a technology to evolve. Then we'll wait for, to get it, we will be in the queue 
it will be parted to us on their terms, their conditions. No. We are a part of it now. We are a part of evolution of it. Friends, boys and girls, the advent of 6G technology is set to push the boundaries of what we thought possible. The Internet of Things is connecting devices and systems, creating a network that enhances efficiency and improves our quality of life. We are amongst very few countries in the world that have addressed 6G. It is in two parts. The commercialization of 6G in this country will be unfolded from 2025 to 2030. Perhaps the first country to do it. That is where we are at the moment. Our commitment to environment is well embedded in our civilization ethos. We practice it in our daily life. But we have taken to green hydrogen. Green hydrogen mission, there is already an allocation of 19,000 crores by the government. But this mission, boys and girls, matters to you more than anything else. It opens vistas of opportunities and of your involvement. You will be happy to know that this is likely to result in renewable energy capacity addition of 125 gigawatt. You know it. I don't have to spell out. It will create 6 lakh jobs and attract investment of 8 lakh crores. India is one of the leading nations in the front league of green hydrogen. You have to think out of it. Your, your research center, I'm sure, sir, would look into those aspects and achieve what we need to. Entrepreneurship and innovation are key to India's economic growth. During my time, it was very difficult to get even a small loan for a library. But now funds are no impediment to your idea at 55. You can achieve whatever you have in mind. You only have to act upon it. Encouraging a culture of innovation and providing incubation support can unleash the talent, entrepreneurial spirit of our youth. You just have to grab the opportunity. And I'm sure Give a serious thought to it. Think out of the box. Try to find out on the radar of your mind what opportunities have emerged. You will find we have not thought, ever thought of those opportunities. They are the opportunities available to us in this country. The entire ecosystem is favorable. And take the big leap. We are already the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. And a startup means an idea has occurred to someone, a young boy or a girl, and that idea is rectified. The moment you get some reprieve from the mandate of the principal and can spare some time, look at this seriously. What are the new opportunities that are being made available to you? And you'll find out you'll have a difficult choice because the choices are multiple. As empowered young minds, you are engines of growth. I mean not literally, figuratively. You are engines of growth, architects of sustainability and guardians of thriving future. You are a vital part of Marathon March of Bharat to 2047. The last thing I should be doing is to giving advice to you. I will not. Is out now. No advice from me. But I'll give a suggestion. Sometimes the difference between advice and suggestion is not even visible. But this, have it from me, is just a suggestion. You may encounter setbacks. And trust me, you will encounter setbacks. There will be setbacks in your efforts. But that is proof not of your failure, but that you are trying, that you aspire to be successful. I appeal to teachers, guardians, and parents. They must appreciate that a setback is a testament to consistency, relentless, fearlessness. Boys and girls, have my insurance and assurance, both. 
Never fear failure. Fear cannot impede your growth. Fear is natural to one's life journey. There are bound to be failures. Why fear what is natural? Why fear which is obvious? Why fear something which will lead you to success and therefore never be run down by failures? I would like to take a moment and make an appeal to the alumni of this prestigious institute. They are in India and abroad. They are in all walks of life. They have impactful presence. They can contribute hugely. The satisfaction level of the chairman of the governing body is high, but he can raise it much higher. He has appreciated the donors. Hindu college, naam mein dam hai. Alumni ko naam ke saath kaam karna chahiye. Rajit, you are listening to me? He's from St. Stephen's. <laughs> Nothing is beyond the alumni. If they resolve today to make this research center a global center of excellence for disruptive technologies, have it for me, it will become one. <laughs> they only have to form a think tank, and there must be several think tanks. Because there are so many people in the country who have been so strong. There are 125 years old, and I am standing here. There is a great experience. They are doing it. And they say, what do they keep in the name? I will say, go to the Hindu college. पता लग जाएगा नाम में क्या रखा है आई विल रिवील वन पेन दैट आई हैव एंड दैट इज द लास्ट आई बी एड्रेस लास्ट पॉइंट आई बी मेकिंग है सम पीपल एट द कॉस्ट ऑफ नेशनलिज्म आर रेसिपी फॉर क्यूस दे आर परफेक्ट रेसिपी ऑफ रेसिपी फॉर क्यूस they shut down their eyes to phenomenal growth, unstoppable growth, rise of infrastructure, rise of our reputation, rise of our passport value. They ignore everything. And they engage in the pernicious design of running down the country. They do it by way of orchestration. They do it in a designed manner. They disseminate information which is frustrating. We know it, it is wrong. Now, when such people set up, set up float anti-national narratives on untenable premise with a design to taint, tarnish, demean our institutions and constitution, run down our growth history, who are the people who can deal with them? Only you can deal with them, boys and girls. You are the supreme power. You are the most effective transformational conveyance of change. You are discerning minds. Ours is a country where, by event management, we give some people very high status, iconic status. He is a great lawyer. He is a great doctor. He is a great economist. Don't be swept by these. Analyze why. And the moment you're asking the question why, you'll know the answer. It is not right. We have seen in Padma Awards, there was a time these prestigious civilian awards emanated from recommendations and patronage. Now they go to the deserving. Therefore, I am making this appeal to neutralize anti-national narratives to the most powerful segment, our youth, because you are the ultimate stakeholders in governance. You are the custodians of this country. You will take Bharat at 2047, Bharat of your dreams and aspirations, and therefore do not spare such elements 
they need to be disciplined, they need to be, they, they, we are painful to, when we look at it, I am really painful. We need to educate them, they are one of us. We need to sensitize them, we need to tell them we will not withstand this and that will be the end of their narrative. Thank you so much for your time. Hinduites, Hinduites, well, you all are Hinduites, you are proud Hinduites. Well, I'm, I'm one of you, I can say I'm a proud Hindu. <laughs> Honor my invitation, Rajit. Though an aluminous of St. Stephen's will catalyze it for the Hinduites. Thank you so much. Catalyze it. धन्यवाद उपराष्ट्रपति जी अब हम सभी लोग राष्ट्रगान के लिए खड़े होंगे